the 3% stamp duty land tax higher rate. How do you avoid SDLT 3%? Well, there are some ideas and you might be able to find those in this video. Uh, Damanji, so that's another question Ooh. for you. There you go. How I do I save on stamp duty land tax for this purchase? It's my second property ownership. Is there a way to save on the 3% SDLT? Uh, so I'm thinking you're thinking in the limited co. Well, I think as well as before you jump into that answer, what what is the three percent SDLT surcharge? Why is it there? Uh, it's often referred to as the additional rate uh, SDLT as well as higher rate. And what this is is it brought, it was brought in just a few years ago, um, and it basically means that at midnight on the day you buy an asset, for example, in your personal name, if there's already a property owned by you at midnight before this new one and you still own it at midnight I'm afraid then there is a three percent additional hike in the SDLT across the full value of what you're buying assuming you're buying something for more than 40 percent there are a small number of conditions where there is no SDLT or that the additional rate doesn't apply and I'm not going to kind of talk about those for about 90 percent of our clients I would say the three percent probably will apply uh, same in a limited co, but actually even the first purchase in a limited co triggers that 3% mm. rate as well, unfortunately. So the answer is an additional 3% on SDLT if you're buying in a company, whatever the question is, unfortunately. Um, there's lots of different things you can do. And one of those, and then I'm going to hand over to Troublemaker Mishevich next to me. Uh, one of the things that you can do is make sure you understand the difference between the asset you're purchasing and the chattels that you're purchasing inside them. There's an interesting word, chattels. If you can separate them out, both in terms of their value and what they are in your contract, then the SDLT will not be charged on the chattel portion. So that's a very step easy in because way anyone say. listening into that might not know what a chattel is. So mm. chattels are fixtures of fittings within the building. That's not integral, as in fixed to the building. Furniture. So even carpets. I, I mean, carpets, carpets curtains, curtains, things like that. You can't, you could argue, well, aren't you know carpets really connected to the building? Well, they are, but you can lift them up really easily. Um, so they're not really that attached. So those kind mm. of things. Um, the subject to land tax is not applicable to those items. No. One of the fastest ways to think about a chattel is if you imagine the property you're buying like a doll's house and you flip it upside down and you shook it, the stuff that might fall out of it, assuming that the walls are actually firmly in place, but the stuff that might fall out of it is likely to be a chattel. Hmm. Uh, just on that, you said about 3% and not going to too much details, but hmm. I do want to give someone an indication of the ways that they could avoid 3%. And let's just go through those just very, very mm -hmm. quickly. Um, uh, the, the first thing is I would mention to you is the the mixed use. So you could buy a shop uh, on the ground floor, a flat above it, that's mixed use. So typically you could argue, well, there are ways of minimizing the 3% SDLT surcharge on that. Because it's classified, the whole building purchase is classified as a non-residential stamp duty land tax, which doesn't have the 3% surcharge. And in fact, non-residential SDLT kicks in at a slightly higher rate. So in other words, you could buy something uh, and pay no SDLT because it falls under that set of rates and those rates haven't kicked in at the price you're paying. Uh, you could also buy properties six in one go. I'm just going to share you this link because this is a really useful link. And again, it's in the comments box. Another good video for you to watch and talk about the 3% SDLT rate. So mm -hmm. please do watch that. But there are other things that, are, that come to mind is buying six properties. And why six properties? What's so interesting about that? Because at six properties, you can choose to apply either residential stamp duty land tax or non-residential stamp duty land tax. Oh, I'll let you guess which one we would apply. Yeah. Uh, so that's another one. Equally, if it's less than... Um, six properties, you can get something called multiple dwellings relief, which allows you to average the price of the properties that you're buying from the same seller. Assuming you're buying them all at the same time, this is um, ideally uh, for ease of calculation. And then if you average them and then work out the SDLT on each of them, perhaps they might fall under a certain level of threshold to which you might buy, which could save you lots of money. We have heard of clients where they've bought a multi-million pound thing uh, and um, a very, very cheap, less than uh, perhaps even £100,000 and average the two because they're being bought from the same person and the SDLT rate then becomes much lower. Uh, hopefully you said MDR because guess what? Mm. There's a video for that. Hooray! Be like an app for that. We've got a video for that. 
Uh, so do look at MGR, but the uh, commercial buildings as well. And uh, really what's fascinating for me is dentists. Uh, why am I talking about dentists? Because dentists typically is a commercial building. But if you go to a, a de typical dentist, uh, they are on a corner plot, which means they've got a bigger uh, car parking space. Mm. But you kind of look at them and go, well, that's nothing more than a house. So could you buy a dentist, because it's commercial, not pay the 3% SDLT high rate, and then convert it to residential? Just a thought. So We see lots of clients buying commercial units to do that kind of thing. 